Welcome to this episode of Dart is In. Today we are talking continuous integration testing and deployment with Dart, everyone's favorite structured web programming language. Today, special guest with us, the founders of Drone.io, Tom Burke and Brad Rizetsky. Thank you guys so much for coming in. Drone.io is a continuous integration service that supports Dart out of the box. And they're here today to show us a variety of different use cases and, uh, and functions that you can use with your Dart projects for continuous integration, testing, and deployment. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. Really appreciate it. So I'm really curious, how did you get into and interested in continuous integration? So it started uh, probably a few months ago. We spent three or four days setting up a Jenkins server, and we thought there's got to be a better way. And define for me continuous integration. I feel like this is something that has a lot of different meanings. What does it mean to you and Drone? So it's the ability to, as you're making changes to your code, automatically test them to find your bugs immediately and notify your team members. Uh, bugs are a lot easier to fix that way. And then there's some nice things you can do in terms of automated deployments, which are a huge time saver. So uh, what attracted you to Dart? Uh, Drone supports many languages, Ruby, Python, Go. I think I saw Scala in there. What about Dart? So we were huge fans of Google Web Toolkit and very active in that community. And we also use Go very heavily. So we were very excited to add another Google technology to our stack. And I feel like continuous integration is even more important for new and up-and-coming systems like Dart that have uh, a lot of milestone releases very quickly. I think it's important for us as Dart authors and developers to stay on top of the continual changes and upgrades to the Dart ecosystem. So getting your package and code into, into Drone can really help you get uh, notified when, say, libraries change or evolve, your dependencies change. And so I, I see continuous integration almost as a requirement for the Dart developer. Absolutely. Drone will always test your code against the latest version of Dart. So you can always make sure that you know, it's using the latest and greatest language features and that you're, you don't have any syntax issues or anything like that. Perfect. Well, let's see some demos. So I think first off, uh, probably the most primary use case is you know, I have some unit tests for my project. How do I make sure that I can help uh, have Drone run all these and tell me if they're working or not? Sure. So let's switch to the screen. and. We're looking at just the most basic Dart unit test. It's going to test a function that adds two numbers. And uh, you know, this, this simple project is checked into GitHub. So now what we're going to do is we're going to import this into Dart and run the unit test. So let's log in. And no need to create uh, a username and password. You can log in with your GitHub, Bitbucket, or Google ID. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with my GitHub account. So we're going to start by creating a new project. And this, like I said before, this was in GitHub. And so we see our list of GitHub projects here. Now, I love this because you don't have to type in any repository name. This is auto-discovering all of your repositories. Absolutely. That's, that's cool. So we're going to click Drone Demo here. And what this is doing now in the background is uh, it added your project to Drone. And then it also set up a build hook so that every time you make and commit a code change, Drone.io is automatically going to build it for you. So of course, we're going to select Dart as the language. Now it's going to prompt us to enter in a build script. Now this is where you may have to edit it uh, based on your, your actual code. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to run the unit test. It's in a file called uh, test runner. So uh, I see here that this, this might be project specific for, uh, for the short term, but I think long Correct. term on the, on the radar of the Dart team is uh, some sort of build tool with well-defined tasks and targets. One of those, of course, would be run all my unit tests. So I think this is going to get even easier as we go, go further in the project. Yeah, that would be great. Now we'll go ahead and save this. The project is now saved. Uh, you can do a lot more um, to you know, modify your build script. You can set up databases. Uh, you can even change the version of Dart that you want to test against. But for now, we're just going to uh, test against the standard version of Dart. And I'm going to kick off a build manual so we can see how it works. So what's happening when you click that button? So when I click that button, it's checking out your code to a fresh virtual machine. It's running the commands that we specified. Now we're looking at the build output that was displayed in real time. And that's awesome. see all the tests passed and see if that's screen stats. So it pulled down the code from GitHub, spawned a VM. Ran the commands that you put into that text, that text field, uh, and then put that the output. That's awesome. That was really quick. Yes. Yeah. Very easy to get started. Very nice. So uh, not everyone has unit tests, although of course we encourage everyone to write unit tests. Of course, Dart ships with unit tests and mock libraries out of the box. 
uh, what can you offer our DART developers who don't yet have uh, unit tests in their project but still want to get notified, say, if libraries are changing the language features? Absolutely. So, a uh, great tool, uh, utility is DART Analyzer. So, DART Analyzer will check syntax, it'll check if you're using uh, you know, specific types. Um, you know, you should be taking advantage of the optional type feature within DART. So, let's go ahead and import a project and we can test out the DART Analyzer feature. So, we'll go to the new uh, setup page, choose GitHub. We're going to go to this to do list. Again, we're going to choose DART. And this time, I'm going to change the script to use Dart Analyzer. Now, as you're typing that, Dart Analyzer is a tool written in Java right now that will analyze all of your Dart code and, again, look at the optional types and see if you have anything that looks like uh, a little fishy, if you will. Things may not match up quite perfectly. And it'll, it'll give you warnings about uh, potential misuses of types. Really, really good tool to ha uh, give you a heads up on the status of your project. Yep. So I modified the script to run Dart Analyzer. Let's go ahead and save this. And now, again, we'll run the build manually. This is dumping us into the real-time output. Now, how did you get the real-time output? So this is using uh, WebSockets. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. And so you can see here we get a ton of great output of uh, you know, specific warnings that Dart Analyzer has targeted. So now we can use this to improve our code. So what, uh, what triggers a, I, I get the sense in, in CI terminology builds are either green or red. Does mm -hmm. uh, drone have green, red, and is there this concept of yellow? And that is, how do you interpret this kind of output? I mean, the code may still work, but mm -hmm. I may want to take action on this. So how do you surface that to the user? Correct. So right now, uh, Dart Analyzer always outputs with a status of zero. So we, we use the exit code of the command you're running to determine if, if Dart should show uh, you know, red or green. In this case, uh, because Dart Analyzer returned uh, an exit code of zero, that's why you see a green. So what you could do is you could analyze the output as part of your um, build configuration. You may be able to grep the output and uh, you know trigger uh, uh, an exit status of one. Okay. If you want okay. To. Cool. So, so out of the box, it can run the command, but then it's up to us to interpret these warnings or errors correct. appropriately based on kind of my own personal threshold for say type usage. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. Very cool. OK, good. So we've seen examples, I think, on um, more like command line driven applications. But I'm really curious. Most of Dart uh, is really targeted at building dynamic web apps and run in the browser. Uh, does Drone.io have anything to help us test um, browser-based apps? Absolutely. So uh, if we look at the screen right now, we're going to go to this to-do app. And we're going to look at two specific files. So the to-do app, this was actually from the game of darts. Uh, we took the to-do app, and we modified it a little bit to add in some unit testing. Um, and since this is a client-side web app, we actually wanted to unit test the DOM. We wanted to make mm -hmm. sure that um, you know, we're adding elements. We, we added error messaging if your to-do is too long. So we wanted to make sure uh, we're showing or hiding the error message correctly. And we've added unit tests for all of that. So what you can see here is. Um, all of these simple unit tests use the Dart HTML package. They test to see you know, certain classes are, are added appropriately, or the, the, the element text has certain uh, you know, is set correctly when there's an error, et cetera. So uh, a lot of times, the way you would run browser-based tests is you would create an HTML file, and you would link to uh, a, a unit test uh, file that you've added a main method to that invokes your unit tests. Very similar if you've done JS unit in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll load up, load up the web page and run uh, your Dart unit tests in the context of the web page. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do you do something like this um, from a command line or in a continuous integration uh, solution yeah. like Drone? So Dart has a great utility called uh, Dump Render Tree. Dump Render Tree is a headless version of Chrome. It allows you to run your unit tests from the command line, and it'll output them to well to the command line, mm -hmm. so that we can you know look at the output and analyze it. So in this sample uh, project, uh, this one that we just ran, we actually set up uh, dump render tree tests. So we'll replace Dart Analyzer with dump render tree. Now, do all Dart uh, drone builds get dump render tree out of the box, or is this a separate config that I would have to do? So this is a separate config that you would have to do. So, okay. uh, and I can pull that up next. We added a shell script that will invoke uh, the unit tests um, via dump render tree. Okay. So. 
Now, as you're typing that, I should mention Dump Render Tree, like Brad said, is a headless version of Chrome. We also have, it's essentially a headless version of Dartium, which is Chromium with the Dart virtual machine. And this, again, is open source like everything else we're doing here, or at least in the, in the Dart world. And uh, you can get Dump Render Tree as a separate download. But of course, Drone.io is going to pack, you know, provides this for free for you, which is yep. really cool. And so one thing we need to do in our build script that's important is we need an X window server to be running inside of our virtual machine. So I'm going to do sudo start. And that will start up a virtual frame buffer. I'm going to save the build script. Now we're going to go ahead and run this. So we see the real time output. And what you can see here is the output of dump render tree. So it's actually uh, dumping some of the elements and their positions in the browser. You can see that in the command line. And you can actually see the uh, output of the unit tests our Dart unit test, so it passed uh, showing and hiding various elements, et cetera. Now, so walk me through this a little bit. So it's still doing the standard. Uh, my code's in GitHub. It's going to pull or clone the repo there. Now, where does it get Dump Render Tree from? Do you have a local cache of that? Yeah, so mm -hmm. Dump Render Tree is included when you download the Dart editor. The Dump Render Tree executable or binary is included. That's downloaded uh, automatically into the virtual machine where you're running your Dart uh, unit test, and it's part of the path. So you can invoke Dump Render Tree directly. That's awesome. That's probably why this is so fast. You've already yes. downloaded the environment Absolutely. that we need, and it's all ready to go. That's awesome. Yes. So you've done all this really great work. We set up a bunch of projects here to set up continuous integrations. How do we brag to the world that we've we've done this? We've got we know all the time whether my project is succeeding or not. Yep. So I'm going to pass this off to Tom. Oh. Yep. Thanks. Yes, yeah, so one uh, really easy and effective way to do that is through what we call a build status badge. So I've just pulled up um, one of our projects in, that's in uh, GitHub that has it. So you can see right here it says uh, passing on drone IO. And all you have to do to get this for one of your projects is you, you go into drone IO, you go to your project settings, and under badges, we give you a couple of links, and these are just uh, links that you can put on your homepage of your project or the markdown. So if you have a readme.md uh, file in pub or GitHub or Bitbucket, you would simply just cut and paste this right into your readme. Uh, and then from there on, every time a build kicks off, uh, this will automatically change the image. I love that. And so if you put it in the readme of your project, it shows up not only in GitHub, as you're seeing here, but now pub, which hosts or can host packages for Dart also can display the readme. And so you get your badge basically anywhere your readme is, which is really cool. Yeah. And it's nice, too. If you click on the badge, it takes you right to the latest build output that generated Perfect. that status. Perfect. So you mentioned continuous integration is much more than just testing, right? Right. Uh, there's a whole bunch of post-testing workflow steps. One probably most important is deploy. Yeah. And I think Drone can also drive a deploy step, too. Can you show us how I might, after tests have succeeded, what else I can do with my code? Yeah, one of the things we find uh, extremely productive is to automate our, our deployments. So uh, if you go to your project in Drone and you go to services, you'll notice uh, there's a couple of deployment targets right now. So uh, right now, I'll just show you how to deploy to Heroku. Now, to uh, deploy to Heroku, you'll have to have a Drone application that uh, has both a server and a client part. So I'm just going to pull up a, a sample right here. And um, really, the first step to getting your, your, your Dart application ready for Heroku is you have to listen on uh, a sp very specific address and port. So in the case of Heroku, it's uh, IP address 0000. And they're going to they're gonna pass in the port parameter in an environmental variable. I should be, so let's be really clear about what's happening here. So yep. Dart, of course, is a language uh, that compiles the JavaScript for modern browser deployments. But it also runs in its own virtual machine. And once you have your own virtual machine, you can run that anywhere. You can run that, of course, in the browser, but you can run it on the server. And so that's what's actually powering this. We're going to put the Dart VM, which runs a web server here, onto Heroku. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, Heroku running the web server. Uh, serving uh, the client, which is also written in Dart. And in the case of the demo I'm showing you, uh, I pulled the uh, countdown clock from the, the Dart SDK samples. So you're going to make this change and, uh, and check your code in. And then you would go to the command line and run a couple of uh, Heroku commands to create an app.
So I'm just uh, going to do that right here. So uh, the first command, uh, and the Heroku's got great documentation. I'm not going to do much on this. You would just run a Heroku create your app name. And uh, this uh, complained about a name that was already taken. So I'll just run that again. OK. And then uh, I'm going to go to uh, one that I've already done a little bit of the setup. And so you, you create your app. Then you, because it's Dart, Heroku requires you to have what we call a Dart build pack. So that's this command right here, Heroku config add, the build pack. And the build pack is actually what connects your, your Dart source code to the Dart virtual machine and its runtime. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it explains to Heroku what to do if, if someone deploys a, a Dart-based app to it. All right, so I did that. Now you have your Heroku app created at this point. It's set up to work with Dart. Uh, the issue now is how do we get uh, Drone to communicate with Heroku? So to do that, we go back into Drone, you pull up your project, uh, you go to Services Heroku, and you download the deployment key. So I'm going to click that right now, and that downloaded a deployment key to my laptop. Now I go back into uh, where I created my app, and I run this simple command to add the key I just downloaded. So this uploads an SSH key to Heroku. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, what this means is uh, Drone should be able to deploy your app automatically. So the last step back in Drone is make sure that uh, in the Heroku deployment, it gives a URL for uh, Heroku. And I'm going to paste in the one I just created and save. Uh, now when I go to build, this is going to, again, like uh, Brad's previous demos, it's going to take your code, uh, check it out to a clean VM. Uh, and then if you had unit tests, assuming they pass, it will then proceed to push this whole thing out to Heroku. That's awesome. So it won't deploy unless everything's working. Yes. Which correct. is the whole idea. Yeah, that's great. And I think what it's doing now is it's actually downloading the Dart SDK and smerging it up with, with the code that you're actually getting from GitHub. and yeah, yep. Or in this case, the, the Heroku Git repository. Yeah, so this finished. So uh, in the build output, Heroku actually gives you a, a little link to the app you just deployed. So I'm just going to pull that up in the browser to, uh, to show you. So you can see this is the, the countdown clock. That's awesome. Uh, server side in Dart. Uh, serving a Dart-based client. So that's pretty cool how easy it is to, to get that working. Oh, it's great. So you start with the code in, in GitHub, and you add some tests, and then you configure it into yep. Drone, which then runs the test, and that works. You publish into Heroku, and then you can show the badge right now back on your project. Yep. I mean, it seems like a whole life cycle here can be yeah. driven off of Drone, uh, and it's Dart every step. Yep. And one last part I was going to mention uh, about deploying to Heroku. So uh, if you're developing in Dart, you are often going to need to run Dart to JS uh, as part of uh, making an app that's usable by more than just Dartium. So it's really easy to do, again, in a drone. So uh, right now, we just had pub install, but there's this little snippet of code, and, and we'll share this. Um, if you just add this to your build script in drone, it runs Dart to JS, which creates some uh, new JavaScript files. And then it's a couple uh, Git commands to take those new files and add them, commit them, uh, because Heroku uses Git also. So this is going to commit them and then deploy uh, your app on the next build uh, with all the JavaScript files automatically generated. That's awesome. And I think that this is going to get a little bit easier when we have, again, this kind of prescriptive build tool. And you, we can build targets. Uh, you know, open source community can introduce their own targets uh, to help with this and make it a little bit, uh, a little bit more terse, which is cool. Yep. Yeah, and this is uh, again. This is just the real-time output um, uh, showing it pushing to Heroku. Very cool! Wow. So we saw a lot of awesome demos, and it was so quick. It's almost almost too easy. Yeah. Great work. So what's uh, what else is coming up for uh, Dart and Drone? What's on your roadmap? So a uh, couple things. We we've got a big release coming up, and one of the things that we're looking to provide is the ability to automatically build your or automatically trigger your builds every time a new uh, version of Dart is available, so proactively. So let's say, for example, when the, when the new weekly release comes out, uh, it'll automatically 
build all your drone projects for you and let you know if there's any issues. Uh, now, that's huge yeah. because as we near 1.0, we're making all the changes now. So we're kind of in a bumpy spot right now. And so to have this kind of proactive build system all hooked up to the analyzer unit test can tell you ahead of time what you need to do to stay on top of these Dart releases as we get to that 1.0 milestone. Absolutely. The, the second thing we want to do is deeper integration with Pub. So you saw how we could auto-deploy a web application with Heroku, but we want to support people developing libraries too. So one thing that we can do is when your build passes and all your unit tests uh, are successful, we can actually publish to Pub automatically for you. So That's that Pub huge. will always have the latest and greatest of your code. Again, more of that life cycle too. Absolutely, I, yes. I really like it. Well, so how do I sign up for Drone? What do I get out of the box? Uh, how do I get started? So yeah, you can just go to drone.io. It's free, completely free for open source projects. So it works with GitHub like you saw. It also works with Bitbucket and Google Code. So, uh, and then if you have private uh, projects that you would like to build, it also works with that. And uh, it's you know, cheaper than, uh, than hosting your own Jenkins and, and much easier to get started. That's for sure. Awesome. So highly recommended to all the Dart authors out there, not just for Dart, of course. If you're running uh, any open source project or private project and you need com uh, continuous integration, check out Drone. Yeah, they're, they're definitely on the edge. Right. Thanks, guys, for coming in. Uh, go to Drone.io to learn more. And we thank you for this uh, watching this episode of Dartisans. Uh, we'll see you in the Dart mailing list, uh, Stack Overflow, and Google+. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Thanks.